I'm Per Eriksson. So here we are in Sweden and we are on our way to the Bo Natur restaurant in the middle of Sweden. And we're there to meet with Joe Divine and his team. As you can see, I'm driving in Audi A5 e-tron that runs on biogas. And as you all know, biogas is made from waste from restaurants and the food industry. Audi is focusing on sustainability and so are the top chefs in Sweden and in the rest of the world. Let's see if you can combine a taste of Sweden and how you can link that to a more sustainable and environmental consciousness. If you were to explain for somebody that's never been to Bo Natur uh, about your style of cooking, what would you say? It's very natural. Uh, we try not to manipulate flavours too much. We like them to be true. Um, we always want it to taste of what it should be. So we like things to be very true. Uh, we like to honour the ingredient as best we can. We challenge ourselves in you know, trying to use as much as we possibly can from this area take, um, and also choosing who we work with. In this area alone there's, you know, there's, there is world-class meat, world-class vegetables, dairy as well. You know, we, we've got just about everything here. So if you were to specify what's so unique about Bo Nature and your kitchen? I think it's the level of honesty, I think. Um, we, uh, like I said, I mean, we don't lie about our food. We don't, I tr you know, I don't try and exaggerate. I don't make up stories to try and sell the food in. I try to just let the food be what it is. Uh, you know, if we have, if there is a story behind the food, then I'll explain it. Uh, being in the middle of the farmland, as you are here in the nature, uh, you can pretty much find all kinds of products or produce that you are looking for. What are you specific looking for to find that uh, really good product or produce to be able to create your dishes? More boils down to, like I say, when we talk about who we choose to work with. Um, like I say, we, we visited many farms in this, you know, in the Nerk area, of course. Um, but, you know, when you, when you see, when you can have this personal contact with these farmers and you see that the lifestyle these animals have, you know, that they're getting raised well, you know, they're getting to roam free, so to speak, you know, the diet is, you know, it's a fantastic diet as well, you know, so you can see and the quality shines through in the meat or the, you know, the vegetables as well, just as, uh, just as important. You can see the quality shines through with these people when you know these people have the same amount of passion perhaps that I do with food as they do with handling, breeding, you know, raising, however you want to describe it. Um, we're so close to nature. Uh, you know, we are a short walk to simply collect produce, you know, and that short distance is, you know, as opposed to it being two days to come to the restaurant, we can have it within a matter of hours and we're already preparing it on the same day. When we asparagus season kicks in, the asparagus is 30 second walk for us and we harvest the asparagus and then it's back down here in under five minutes and we're already preparing it. You know, it's whereas in other cases, perhaps if we were located in a city, that's not the case. You know, those, that produce has to be packed, transported and then distributed. Yeah, that can take two, three days sometimes, you know. So for us, it's, we've, we've shortened that, that time in which it's from, from the ground to us. And it also, in terms of with the game, you know, we have liver that can be, you know, less than 24 hours old and it's coming to our door and it's ready, we can use it. So it's just a few minor adjustments and it, we're ready to go. You know, the, these are the things, I think for us, like I say, cutting out almost like the middleman 
you know, allows us to have this fantastic produce here. And, you know, it's like I say, it's, it flows with the name. Boom, that's it. And uh, I mean, it's the same actually for our bread. We, we bake it in our stone oven, which is just a stone's throw from the restaurant here. And just next to that is basically where we keep our crayfish during the season. So we keep them in large containers um, and we feed them under the season, uh, porridge and uh, potatoes is their diet. And it's the same there. So every day they're just lifted out of the pond and brought straight to the restaurant, prepared daily as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, these are the small details that you know, can make a good dish great. You know, these are the, the small minor adjustments in which we take to, to try and really be true to the ingredient. You know, try and really say like, how can this ingredient be the best it can be? You know, and like I said, how can we be true to this flavor that we're trying to harness from this ingredient? You, as an Englishman, do you find that there is such a thing as a taste of Sweden? Yes, I, I would say so, definitely. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, root vegetables, for example, um, this is, you know, they, they go through much more severe temperature changes. Um, that can shine through in the, in the flavour. Um, sometimes a lot more iron flavour towards sort of your turnips, uh, stuff like that. And I mean, it's the same with, uh, we have chickens, they're also 10 seconds walk here, just, just our, our neighbours, shall we say, that um, we feed them ourselves every day um, you know, with what we have left over from the kitchen. As you know, there's a trend among top restaurants in the world uh, to use the concept no waste kitchen, that they take care of our environment in a more conscious way. How do you do that? What's your take on that? The first thing to start with is shop local. You know, try to use what you have in your area first and foremost. You know, cut out those transportation, cut out the air pollution, you know. These are all small steps that every restaurant across the world can take. Like, you know, if truffles aren't available to you, you know, use, mushroom, use the mushrooms instead. You know, mushrooms are just as good, you know, as like we have, we have fantastic chanterelles here. I mean, we do a lot of projects in terms of, you know, we'll, we'll dry, ferment, pickle, I mean, we will, we will literally test everything. Bon Natur, and you are already on the gastronomic map of Scandinavia, I would say. Uh, lots of attention uh, already. Congratulations to that. Uh, but where will you be in a year from now? In a year from now, I think it's just more building on how could we create a better experience for those people who make that journey out to us, you know, from whether, you know, from that first step into the door you know, we just want to build upon everything that we do and analyse every little detail of that experience in order to create a better experience for the customer. If you were to give an advice to a young person uh, that wants to become a chef, what would that be? The best piece of advice I think I ever got in my life, and that was listen to everybody, make up your own mind later.